Hello and welcome. I think this thing takes a moment to start, so it may not have started yet. Let's have a look. This is the uh, lull before the broadcast, or maybe we're actually broadcasting. Hey, it looks like uh, the broadcast is firing up. Good. Yeah, we're actually live. Good. Hello and welcome. That is good to know. Thank you, We Code Make Code. Uh, so I am uh, John Park, and here we are. This is Make Code Live on the Microsoft Make Code channel, uh, Mixer channel. We're also rebroadcasting, I think, to Adafruit, uh, YouTube, and Periscope, and a few other good places. Um, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on the Mixer chat in the Microsoft Mixer channel. Uh, so. If you are uh, a longtime viewer of the Adafruit uh, live channels, you may know my show, uh, John Park's Workshop, and I usually run that show out of my workshop, and here I am instead inside the studio. Uh, so this is my sort of recording studio and electronics bench lair, uh, and uh, I'm excited to have gotten this set up for some live uh, make code coding. So my plan here is to build uh, a project each week inside of Make Code that may involve uh, hardware sometimes. So you may know I'm a big fan of the uh, Circuit Playground Express. This one I've got in a little acrylic case, so it's being extra shiny. Uh, but I will also do some other boards using the Maker. Uh, dot make code site as well as Make Code Arcade, and all of these things can be. Uh, coded and tested and played and um, play tested inside of the simulator in the browser. In fact, you'll probably notice that there's this uh, simulator right here that I've got over my face. And in fact, I'm living inside of uh, make code. So uh, here's my here's my forever mask. Uh, so this is actually a feature of make code. It's got a green screen and I'm using that green screen to be able to um, broadcast from inside of Make Code so that it's uh, hopefully as natural as possible for me to interact with uh, with the Make Code environment. So I am probably going to be targeting things that are in the sort of the beginner to intermediate range. Uh, I'm not going to do a straight up from the ground up. This is Make Code for the first time. So you may want to check out. Some of the excellent guides, uh, if you just go to Make Code, uh, let's see, we have makecode.adafruit.com as well as uh, the others for Microbit and uh, Make Code Arcade. So if you go to any of those Make Code um, sites, and maybe it looks like maybe we've got some uh, people in our chat, so it's possible that someone will paste a, a blink, uh, a blink, a link up there. Um, for some of the different make codes. I've just lost my, my mixer uh, panel. There it is, Whew. got it back so I can see the chat. Uh, yes, yeah, so just go to makecode.com. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Jack in the box there, that's got a link to all the different editors. So uh, once you're set up with make code, you can create your programs using the graphical interface. Uh, that's one way to do it. So you can see here, I've got these blocks Another way to do it is inside of either JavaScript or in some cases you can use Python. Um, and I'm going to be focusing primarily on blocks. We may get into some, uh, some JavaScript and Python at some point, but right now I'm going to do a blocks-based project. Uh, and you can, like I said, view your work here in the simulator. And I'll probably stick to the simulator today, but we can also then upload to hardware. So maybe in the end I'll, I'll upload this one to hardware. So what I wanted to build today is a uh, project that will use lights. So we have these NeoPixels around the 
uh, edges of the board. There are 10 of these little, what are looking like white dots right now. So we're gonna use some lights. Uh, we're gonna use some mathematics uh, calculations using a random function. We're gonna use some input using a button. So we have a couple of buttons here that we can click on the interface. Um, and we're going to create a dice roller. Uh, so what we'll be able to do is create uh, just like a die that you would use when you're playing a, a tabletop game. We're gonna create a dice roller and that means you'll be able to use it right here in the simulator uh, or on real hardware if you choose. And one of the cool things about make code projects is that you can very often adapt them to other hardware. So if you have a micro bit, a lot of what we're gonna do will transfer. There'll be some differences, uh, for example, as you go to the different type of display. Um, but we're gonna build this one for Circuit Playground Express. And so, uh, by the way, when I talk about this simulator here, you can make it real big. So if you look at the icon for the Circuit Playground Express, it has a little interface underneath it for stopping and starting your program, resetting the program, going into a debug mode, turning on and off audio, uh, as well as this large O vision. So now I'm John Park, the Circuit Playground Express head, which many of you may have already suspected, but now it's confirmed. All right, and you can click that button again to get back to uh, sort of the regular size view. All right, so uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm going to actually get rid of this forever block. The uh, make code canvas in this editor will usually start with a default uh, program that just has this one forever loop block. And we're actually gonna get rid of that. And there's a couple ways you can do it. One is just to drag it off to the side. And as I drag it over, you'll see trash can icon shows up, or we can right click on it and hit delete block. Uh, so I'm just gonna drag that off to the side to whoosh, get rid of it. And now what I'll do is create a sort of setup. So sometimes uh, what I like to start up with is a uh, loop block. So if I click here in the loop category, I'll see I have an on start block. There was that forever block we got rid of. So you, you're never really permanently getting rid of things in a sense. You can undo uh, if you want to, or you can go back and find them. They'll, they'll always be here over in these categories. So I'm gonna grab this on start, and I think of this as a sort of startup. Uh, let's place it right there. So in this on start, I'm going to initially set some pixels, uh, some of these neo pixels I mentioned, these colored lights, RGB colored lights around the edges. I'm gonna set these up in a pattern. First of all, to test just how that looks. Uh, second of all, I want to indicate when the program starts, what its function is. So it's nice if it actually looks like something is lit on it, so I know there's something going on. So I try to have something happen when you first start up the program. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do is click on this light category, the top one that's blue here. And this is going to bring up a whole bunch of different NeoPixel uh, blocks for either lighting them, setting animations, uh, doing some more advanced functions like graphing a value, like it's a, a meter that will change as a value changes, uh, as well as some little low level things like setting the brightness of them. Sometimes they're really, really bright and you wanna dim them. So let's start out with, I really like this very visual one. It's this show ring block. And so what I'll do is drag that right inside of this on start block. And it's okay if you drag it to the canvas and don't put it anywhere. But what you'll notice is it's kind of dimmed out. It gets this little diagonal hatch mark uh, logo or, or style to the background. Uh, and what that means is that it is disabled. It's not gonna function in your program. It's not doing anything when it's sitting out here on its own because it needs to live inside of some kind of an event loop such as this on start block. So I'm gonna drag that in and boom, there we go. Now we can see not only is the show ring block enabled, uh, it's lit up a, a sort of normal color and it's not grayed out with those little diagonal hatches. Uh, but you'll also notice that if I look at my simulator here, it has lit up with an entire ring of red pixels. So all 10 of these NeoPixels are now lit up. 
Uh, so what I can do with this block is change what some of these colors are. So uh, this is a neat interface. It has these little color selectors. So these are some prepared colors that we can pick from, like little color swatches or paint swatches. And you'll see if I, let's, let's go ahead and pick blue. If I click on some of these little circles, that will change those to blue. And now if I take a look over at my simulator again for the Circuit Playground Express, that has lit up some of these pixels to blue. So it's a nice uh, sort of one-to-one -one representation of the board, this sort of stylized version of the board. So what I want to do, and you can go ahead and play around with this. This is fun to just go and, and try out some different colors, uh, see what you like for, for patterns. What I'm going to do, however, is set it up to look sort of like a uh, six-sided die. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set some of these off. So if you look at the center uh, circle in this little set of swatches, it's not obvious at first, but the center is essentially off. So I can set some of these to red. And I'm going to do essentially every other pixel as red. And then I'm going to pick my center, uh, which is the no color block, and go through and click on some of these to turn them off. Uh, by the way, if you hear a dog barking in the ba background, that's because our, our, uh, our guide dog puppy in training, Zelda, has, has uh, come back to our house after being at the guide dog's kennel. So she likes to bark, and you might hear her in the background. We're very happy to have her back. She's a sweet dog, uh, but a barky one. Okay, so now you'll see I've got this uh, pattern set up at the beginning in this on start block. And if I look at my simulator large screen, I see that same pattern in there. Okay, and another thing I can do at this point is adjust the brightness. I mentioned that we have some of these low level commands for how the NeoPixels work. So if I click back on this light category over here in the left and scroll down just a little bit, you'll see there's a set brightness block. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that first. So I wanna set the brightness and then I wanna color the pixels. And I believe this 20 is the default. It looks pretty similar over in the simulator to me. Uh, and when you click on the uh, number field here, you can either type in a number or you get this convenient little slider. So if I slide this up a bit and then let go, you'll see the brightness will uh, be increased over here. Oh, I'll click off of it to accept the command. You'll see the brightness will increase over here in the simulator. Hit run. And now these are sort of glowing a little white actually on the screen um, compared to the, the real pixels on your device, which will be very, very bright. Um, and by the way, looking over in the chat, I will say hello to Mr. Certainly, who has popped by to say hello. Hello and welcome. I hope you're playing along if you're interested in, in uh, learning or uh, just having a fun time creating a project inside of Make Code. Like I said, you don't need any hardware necessarily. It's fun to use it on hardware, but you can use the simulator right here to play along at home. And I promise I'm not going to go super fast. So you should be able to keep pace. And if you ever get lost or stuck, please just write a message in the chat over here in the uh, Make Code Mixer page. And by the way, if you're not watching there, and that's where the chat's happening, it is at mixer.com slash make code. You can subscribe to that channel. Uh, and thank you, Jacqueline. Jacqueline says, love the name Zelda. Yeah, we When uh, the guide dog puppies are born, they're in a litter that has, all the puppies have the same uh, first letter of their name. So you have to pick from within, we got to pick from within Z and we, we were able to get Zelda, which we're very happy about. All right, so uh, now I've got my brightness set here. And if you look at that slider, I mentioned it goes all the way up to 255. And I'll click on the sort of canvas to accept that. Let me hit play. I'm not sure why my, my simulator is requiring me to restart. Um, so you can see that that's the full brightness on, on screen. And if I drop this pretty dim, let's say uh, around five or six, 
uh, you can see that they look a little dimmer there, but that, that'll matter much more for uh, the actual hardware device. So I'll bring this back up to something reasonable, around 100. And um, the other reason I wanted to show that was just so that you could see this is a pretty common interface inside of Make Code, which is the number box, which has a slider associated with it. And that slider range, in this case, goes from 0 to 255. And that's because this is an 8-bit value, which allows numbers ranging from essentially 0 to 255 or 256 levels of brightness. You'll see that number, that uh, range show up a lot. But uh, conveniently, you don't have to guess what the range is in most cases on these types of uh, number fields because the slider will automatically allow you to, to work within the range for the uh, attribute that you're changing. Okay, so now we've got our uh, set up here. We have, we have what appears to be something sort of dice-like. And by the way, you can pick a different color if you like. You don't have to go with the red. I'm going to see how that looks in blue. Let's switch that out. I like that too. That looks nice. All right, so I'm going to go with some blue pips on my die. Uh, okay, so next what we're going to do, and I'm going to bring up a cheat sheet so I remember how I, I prepared to do this. Uh, Let's see. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is um, figure out a way to pick among those six NeoPixels when we're rolling dice. So what I'm going to eventually end up with is a mechanism where I can press a button and it's going to randomly choose uh, either to just light up one, two, three, four, five, or six of these NeoPixels. The issue is these NeoPixels that we're lighting up have numbers, and those numbers are, in this case, 0, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 9. So they go from 0 to 9. Often in Make Code and most computer programming languages, you'll find that number sets start at 0. That's the first number, and then they work their way up. So this is 0 all the way up through 9. Uh, however, I don't want to roll a 3 and have it look like uh, this. I don't want to see a little clump of 3 pixels. I want to see my nice pattern that looks more like dice. Uh, so to achieve that, what we're going to do is create a list of those numbers. And uh, the way I'm going to do this is actually, this is considered an advanced uh, topic in the categories of make code. So what I'll do is I'll open up this advanced tab and I will see a section called arrays right here. It's this sort of purple, dark purple block. When I click on that category, I'm actually going to use this very first one. This is a, an array that says set a list to an array of, and then it has a couple of values here. So let's put this in this on start block, because this is still something I consider part of our setup. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. You can use the mouse wheel and your command or windows key to, to zoom, or you can use these minus and plus keys at the bottom of the interface. And what I'll do is, first of all, uh, let's talk about this concept there's a couple of concepts that are going on here. Uh, first one is the concept of a variable. And so there is a uh, object or an item, or in this case, a collection of items that we're creating. And we want to be able to talk about them in a uh, meaningful, predictable, memorable way. And so a variable, in this case, it's, an, it's a variable that represents a list or an array of numbers. So we'll have multiple numbers, and those are part of this variable that's called an array. Uh, but the generic name list isn't too descriptive of what it is. So what I'll do is click on this list dropdown, and whenever you have a variable block, you'll see the variable name in a little box on its own with a drop-down arrow. And that means that there are some things you can do, like pick among different variables, uh, create a new variable, rename a variable, or delete a variable. So what we're going to do is actually just re rename this variable. 
And when I click on that, it brings up this variable rename box. It says I'm going to rename the uh, list variable, and this will change all the, the instances of this variable that exist in the, um, in the program. What I'm going to do is rename that from list to how about dots. And then I'll click OK, because this is going to represent the dots on the dice. Those are sometimes called pips, too, but I'm going to call them dots. Uh, and so now I have this variable array uh, that is called dots, and it has two items in it currently, and those items are numbers, and the numbers are one and two. Uh, what I want is, remember I mentioned that these NeoPixels are actually numbered starting with zero, so I want the first uh, item in my array to be called as zero. And then the next one is not one, because I'm leaving that one blank, but two. So I can leave this alone. Two works there. Uh, but I need more items in this list. In fact, I need six items in this list. So what I'm going to do is hit this plus sign that's in the array um, block. And I'm going to hit that until I have six number boxes in here. And when you hit that sixth one, it happens to decide that the interface is getting too wide and it, and it flips it to be vertical, which I kind of like. I like this uh, orientation of this. Uh, by the way, I'm also moving around the canvas here so that I can get a better look at things by just clicking my uh, left mouse button in the blank canvas. Mine's see-through, but you'll see normally a gray dotted background there. Uh, so I can scoot this up to where we're looking at just this array and my NeoPixel representation. And so now uh, the numbers that I want to choose are this 0, 2, we're skipping 3, so the next one's going to be 4. Uh, number 5 is the next one here. There's nothing to skip in that case. We'll skip number 6, we'll go to number 7, and we'll skip eight and go to number nine. Uh, so now what we have is a list of variables that represent the exact uh, positions of the NeoPixels by name that we want to light up. And uh, the reason that we created this is when we press the button, we're going to have a random number selected. And whatever that random number selected is that's within a range, is going to be how many of our dots we're going to light up. When we go to say which dots, let's say three of them uh, are going to get lit. We've rolled a three. We will say, go ahead and loop through this array called dots and pick the first three items. So the first item is going to be dot zero, which is NeoPixel zero. The next item will be dot two, which is NeoPixel two. And the next, the third item will be dot four, which is NeoPixel four. Okay, that's why we're creating that. And that's a sort of uh, what I consider a setup item. So it goes into this on start block. And now we have our setup. So uh, I'll remind you at this point, if anyone has any questions, uh, if you're following along and you have a question, go ahead and ask in the mixer.com slash make code chat. I'm keeping an eye on that chat and, and so are a couple other people. So if you run into any questions or problems, let me know. Okay, so our, our program doesn't do much right now, right? It uh, shows up as this dice six, roll of six looking thing. Um, but that's it. That's all we see. And we don't really have a way of interacting with it right now. So what I'd like to do is start off with a button press. So you'll you'll see both in the simulator and on the real Circuit Playground Express. And in fact, I'm going to see if I can pop this case off. These are tenacious cases, uh, but they're very shiny. And so it's harder to see. So I think I have a I have focus is not in auto focus mode. So it'll look best back here. Uh, so that has a couple of buttons on it that we can press. And when I'm working on a project for the Circuit Playground Express or another microcontroller board that has a lot of sensors on it, 
even if I'm going to use something else like shake. Uh, that's, an, that's an interaction we can do on this, which is kind of fun. You can shake this and roll the dice. But what I start off with usually is a button press, just because it's very simple and it's easy to test. Uh, and it's, it's one of the easier ones to test in the simulator as well, although we can test shake in the simulator. So uh, what I want to do in order to interact with this, in order to have it try to roll the dice, is press a button. And so if we look over here, and I'm going to fold up that advanced section right now because we don't need that at the moment. If we look here in, uh, oh, and by the way, I meant to ask, how's the volume level? Because I can't check that easily right now. And uh, let me know if it's too quiet because I can boost that a little bit. I'm going to boost that just a little bit. You tell me if that gets too loud. Um, and now everyone might have to change their volume if that got too loud. Um, but I forgot. I, I wanted to check with you and I didn't have a way to do that yet. So um, now what I'm going to do is add a button press as an input. So that means the user is interacting with the device or user is interacting with the simulator. And that is an input interaction. So in this input category, it's this pink block here. Um, oh, and let's see, let's, let's just check the chat. Someone said, uh, good, okay, our volume is good. Great, thank you for that. So now what I'm gonna do is click on input and from the input category, again, we're going to use the very first block. This is, you can tell, it's something you do a lot. So the very first block up at the top is the one we want. It's this on button A click. Uh, one thing you'll notice is sometimes when you're looking for things over in these categories of blocks, the exact item you want might not be listed, but one that's very similar may be listed. So for example, there are two buttons on the Circuit Playground Express. They are labeled A and B. And so if I want to do something with the B button, I'm not going to see an item in this category uh, that says on button B, but I'll notice there's a drop down, which means there's probably hidden items or other, other choices in that menu. So I will pick on button A, click, and then I'd be able to choose from a bunch of other options. So we'll explore those another time, but right now we're gonna stick with button A. And there are a few different types of interaction you can do with the button. There's a click, which means you've pressed and released. There's a long click, which means you've pressed and held and then released. And then we can do events just on down or just on up. So we're gonna use just the click, uh, which is the default here. Uh, and what I want to do when I click is, first of all, I'm going to set all of the pixels to black so that we can turn off this default six uh, pixels that we have lit up. So from the light category, if we go down, uh, we could do this with the show ring and set them all to black, but that's kind of a large block to stick in the interface a bunch of times. So I'm going to actually choose a couple of items lower. It says set all pixels to, and then it has a color choice. So I'll drag that into my button click and I'm going to rearrange things a little bit so that we can see everything we're working on a little clearer right now. Uh, and all right. Oh, hey, Cedar, Cedar Grove. I'm noticing over in our channel, we have Cedar Grove uh, is shown up and my uh, audio level is, I think, a little low. So I'm just going to turn that up a bit more and keep an eye on my audio level meter there. Oh, I see. This one, this one goes into the red at around minus 8 dB, which is unusual. All right, so I don't have to be so paranoid about that red. All right, we'll boost that up just a little bit again. Sorry about that. If you've perfected your volume adjustment, adjustment you may have to change it again. Uh, okay, so inside of this button A click, I've added the set all pixels to red. And to turn them off, I'm going to click and choose black. So black is the same in this case since it's light. Uh, a, a setting of zero, zero, zero for red, green, and blue is, is uh, one way you can think of that. That's pretty much the same as off. So we can test this now. Again, I like uh, to iterate a lot or try things as I go. And so 
what I'm going to do is test this in little pieces. So the first thing we tested was just lighting up the pixels, then changing their color. There's really no way to test that um, variable array called dots yet. So uh, I couldn't test that. But the next thing I can test is what happens when I press button A. So we'll come over here and maximize the uh, simulator. And now when I press A, all of the pixels turned off. So that's good. That means that the set all pixels to black is working. Uh, what you'll notice is that that doesn't, uh, we don't have any way to get back to the pixels being on right now. And the reason is because this on start block is a loop that runs just one time. It runs just when the program restarts. So that can happen when you plug in a board or when you reset your program. So I hit this little reset button here in the simulator, this little recycle symbol, uh, and that will restart the pro pro uh, program. So if I turn off all the pixels by hitting A, I can restart it by pressing this restart. And same with this reset here in the middle of the board. Oh no, that doesn't work. Oh, that's strange. I thought that would. All right, so we'll reset with this. And now we can move this back over here. So like I said, OnStar only runs one time. Button A we can do many times, but it's just setting it to black when it's already set to black. So that won't do much. Um, now what I'll do is I'm going to add a little bit of a sort of dice rolling animation. Uh, so I want to make it look like something's happening. When you roll dice, you don't want, I don't want at least for it to just instantly give me the result, especially if it's a disappointing result like a one. If we roll a one and that's bad, uh, I don't want it to just unceremoniously show up as a one. So what I'd like is a little bit of anticipation, a little bit of an idea that we're rolling some dice. Um, and so what I came up with for this is to use a uh, canned animation block. So in the light category, what you'll see is again up here in these very popular top blocks, we have show animation uh, and then there's a, a list of possible animations and then for a period of time. So I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to put it under my set all pixels black and let's have a closer look at this. Uh, so again, this is a uh, menu choice of different... Oh, hold on, I'm checking the chat. I'm seeing messages disappear before my very eyes. I'm not sure why, huh? Um, so I'm going to check the... Um, oh, does that mean... No, that doesn't mean my audio went bad. Phew. Uh, so I'm going to check the different choices here for uh, animation. And... Right now we have six choices from here. Uh, why don't we take a look at some of these? So again, since pressing the A button will do whatever is in this, we can try them out. So I'm going to maximize my simulator. And then when I press A, you'll see it kind of blinks out black for a moment, but we might even just barely perceive that because there's almost no delay before it then starts an animation. So this is running a sort of rainbow swirl animation and it's running it for half a second. And that's what I can see here in this block is that we have this rainbow swirl animation. And uh, it says if I hover over it, in fact, uh, there's a little tool tip that will show up that says rainbow. And I've set it for uh, half a second, that's the default. And the reason I know that's half a second is because this is listed in milliseconds, which stands for thousandths of a second. So there's 1000 milliseconds in a second and therefore there's 500 uh, milliseconds in half second, half the amount. Uh, so let's uh, increase the drama here and bring it up to a second. So that's 1000 milliseconds there. Uh, I can test that out. Okay, there's my, my animation running for a second. That looks nice. But I'm going to pick a little, uh, what I find to be a little more exciting animation for this use, which is this sparkle animation. Okay, so let's try this out. In fact, let's go full screen. You can see it restarted. My initial die of six is showing up. And now we get this little flashing lights animation, the sparkle. 
I like that. That's a good dice rolling. It looks like the, the device is thinking, which is what I want. Okay, and then what I'm going to do after that uh, sparkle animation, one thing you'll notice is that um, it will finish with a pixel lit. So one pixel will stay lit, and I want to turn those off. So the way to turn these off again is to use this set all pixels to black block. Now, this is a great tip for making uh, things a little more convenient, a little faster, is rather than head to the light category, refine that block, bring it back into the canvas and place it where I want it, I like this shortcut, which is if the block already exists in my scene or in my program, I'm just going to right click on it, right mouse button click on it, and that will give me this option to duplicate the block. So if I right click on set all pixels to black and hit duplicate, now I can drag this copy of it uh, underneath my sparkle animation. And now when I press A, what's going to happen is it's going to turn off all the lights. So none will stay lit when it's done, which is great. That's just what we wanted. Uh, and now what we'll do is, um, Talk about how we can pick a random number and how we can use that random number to light up the appropriate NeoPixels. So again, there are a couple of ways that you can go about this. Uh, there are usually a lot of ways, in fact, that you can go about things. But I'm going to try to do uh, a straightforward and simple um, selection of a random number. And I'm going to incorporate that into a uh, type of a loop that's called a for loop. And what this loop will do, if we look over, remember we got our start and our forever block was originally from this, uh, this notion of loops. If I look over in the loop category, uh, we also have one that will repeat a certain number of times. We might be able to use that one. And we also have this for index from 0 to 4 loop, and that's one that I go to a lot. Uh, we also have for a value within a list or other array. Um, so these are a few options that we, that we can choose. Um, I'm going to do this for index from 0 to 4 loop, and there's things that in there that we're going to change. Um, if we hover over that, we get this tooltip which says, have the variable named index take on the values from 0 to the end number, counting by 1, and do the specified blocks. What does that mean? Have the variable index. So we've talked a little bit about this notion of a variable. A variable is a name of an object that can stand in for other things. So it's easy for me to call that array dots that we made earlier. And in this case, we're going to call a variable whose name is index. Uh, sometimes in computer programming, you'll see the letter I used for this. Um, and it has the same, it stands for the same thing. But in this case, what's going to happen is we have a variable that's named index, but its value can change. So variables represent a thing that can change. And in this case, the variable named index will be representative of the number zero the first time this loop goes through. And then the next time the loop goes through, it's going to increase the value of index by 1. So now index is equal to 1. The next time it goes through, index is equal to 2. Next time it goes through, the index is equal to 3, and so on. So let's bring this into the button click uh, input block. What's going to happen right now when I click the button is it's going to set the pixels to black. It's going to show our animation for one second. It's going to set the pixels to black again. And then it's going to run through this loop but it doesn't have anything to do inside of the loop. So if I test it at this point, nothing will appear to have changed. Um, and that's because we want to put some instructions inside of the loop. So uh, what I'll do to demonstrate this at first is not what we're going to do ultimately, but I think this might make it a little clearer. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this light category and I'm going to pick a block that's a little lower that's called set pixel color at 0 to red. 
I'm going to place that inside of this block. Now, this on its own would just set the first pixel to red. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this variable named index, essentially a copy of it, into this slot here. So what, let me zoom it up on this. So what's happening now is that when we get to this section of having pressed the button, four times in a row, it's going to set the pixel at whatever this index value represents to red. So let's try that out. I'm going to press the A button on my simulator. It's going to do the following. It set the pixels to black. It ran through the animation. It set the pixels to black, so none of them are left on. And then it went and colored in pixel 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right, so the pixel named 4 is actually the fifth pixel. This can be confusing, but if you remember that these are indexed to start at 0, it makes a little more sense. So we've gone and each time that loop went through, it added 1 uh, to the number of the index and lit the corresponding pixel. To make this a little easier to see, and again, you don't need this in the final, but I like to do this when I'm testing things or trying to understand things, from that loops block, or loops category, I brought in this pause. And I'll set the pause, let's say, to about half a second. This will go pretty slowly, but what it's going to do is each time this loop runs through, it's going to set a pixel to red, and then it's going to wait half a second before it does the next one. So let's maximize the simulator, and now when I press A, you're going to see that's each time that index increased, it raised that number one and it lit the corresponding pixel. Okay, so that's just for testing. I'm actually not going to do that in the end, um, but I hope that makes sense. And you can let us know if you have any questions in the chat about how that works. Um, but now I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I don't need to pause here. Um, actually, you know what? I'll leave the pause in. That might be helpful. Um, okay, let's... Uh, take down my audio level a little bit. I heard it. it's distorting from C. Grover in the chat. Thank you, C. Grover. Uh, so I'm also going to back off a little bit there and a little bit there. All right. So um, in order to light up instead of the first four pixels, let's say, and instead I want to light the four pixels that are in my pattern. Remember, we set up this pattern. Whoops. Wrong screen. We set up this pattern here. So what happens if we light those four uh, items, which, which will give us this same sort of gap-based pattern? How do we do that? Um, so what we can do is we can say, rather than setting a pixel at a particular uh, number directly, what we can do is ask for the pixel number that's in this array or this list here. So this corresponds to this notion of arrays. So to get blocks related to this, I'm going to reopen this advanced section, head over to arrays. Uh, and now I'm going to pick a, a block from here that's getting the value at a position in the array. So uh, here it says returns the value at the given index in an array. There's that index word again. So what I'll do is bring this in. And I'm going to replace that block that I had for lighting up a pixel color. And I'm going to move this over uh, a little bit and zoom out. I'll wear this right on my head here. So uh, what's happening now is it's going to pick a pixel color that is from this array that I called dots. That's what I want it to do. So to make it do that, I'm going to pick this drop down and say, let's use the dots array. So we have this list. Okay, so we're setting a pixel color at the dot, and then we're getting the value at, and here it says zero. Well, again, this is a list of things, and the way we talk about lists of things is with an index. In this case, the index of this array at zero position is zero, at one position is two, at three position is four, and so on. So 
the way that we lit each subsequent pixel a moment ago is kind of the same way we're going to ask that um, array called dots to give up one of these numbers to us. So if we, if we look back at this index from 0 to 4 block, I'm going to, again, copy this index and drop it right here. So what's that going to do? That means that every time we loop through this index, which happens 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, it's going to grab the next item from this list. Okay, so let's let's play that. Let's try that out. Um, I'm going to maximize the simulator. I'll hit A. It's going to run through the animation and then check that out. We're now no longer lighting up. I'm so excited. I'll come to the side here. Uh, we're now no longer lighting up the pixels that are right in a row. We're lighting up the pixels in our pattern, and that's because we're asking for that dots array. We're asking for the locations from that dots array. This is somewhat of a intermediate uh, or, or maybe even slightly advanced topic, but it's also really fundamental to doing things in any kind of programming language. So uh, I thought it would be a really good thing to start to understand and practice and, and see the value of. Um, because there, there is not a more elegant way that I know of to talk about things in a list that aren't actually just numbers that are directly in a row. So this is our little magical pattern that we get to access here in this dots uh, array. So right now what we have is a... Um, I have a bunch of code in my face. Let's move it over. What we have now is a... Uh, dice that does not give us anything other than a 5 every time we roll it. So if we come over and press A, each time I roll this, I'm going to get 5. It's also always pausing between them, and I don't really want that. I think I want it to just blast them all pretty much on, on screen or on the device at the same time. And so I'm going to remove this pause loop. I don't need that anymore. I was using that to demonstrate things. Uh, since this happens incredibly fast to the human eye, it will look like all of those lights come on at the same time, pretty much. So when I press that, I'm seeing five of those dots light up, and it looks like they all just happen at the same time. So that'll work well. Um, but... Like I said, we need to add randomness to this. Um, right now, it is uh, selecting five items always because of this index loop, this four index from zero to four loop, the way it's set up, it tells it it has to. It always has to go through these four steps. So what I'd like to do instead is have it pick a random number uh, every time. So that means if it picks a zero, it's only going to pick that first item in the array, so we'll get a one. If it picks uh, a five, then it's going to pick all of the items in the array because it's going to go from zero to five. So how do we do that? We can actually use a single block to add to this uh, random selection function. Uh, I'm going to minimize this advanced tab over here in the categories again. Head up to math. So there's a block here called math. And this lets us do some addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, finding the remainder, a few other advanced functions. But the one I want is close to the bottom here. It says pick random from 0 to 10. And we're going to adjust that. But that's the block we want. Uh, if I hover over that, it says it returns a pseudo-random number between a minimum and a maximum included. If both numbers are integral, the results are integral. So what we'll do is drag that and place it into this index from 0 to number block. So originally this was going up to 4. Now it's going to go to a random number. And I'm going to set that range, like we've talked about, with a, with a list that's indexed at 0. We want to go from 0 to 5, because that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 items. Okay, so what that means now is anytime we press the button, we're going to 
go and light up the first at least and maybe all the way up through the sixth pixels. Can you stand it? Are you ready to try it? Let's open uh, or maximize the simulator. And now I'm gonna press the A button. It's thinking and we rolled a three. Press it again. We rolled a two. We rolled a five. Four. Another five. And a six. Well, that was nice that we got through all of them, but it might not always happen. It might take a long time to get there because it really is uh, this, what, what we're calling a pseudo random number. Uh, means it's not encryption grade randomness, but it's pretty random. It's it, it uh, the odds of it rolling any number uh, any time are are the same. It it could pick any of those every time we roll it. So that will work really well as a game. Um, uh, if you're playing dice, uh, if you're playing a game that requires rolling uh, zero uh, one through six, this will work really well. What I'm going to do now, we're we're just about out of time. And thank you, by the way, for for uh, sticking with me on this. Uh, dice rolling program. Couple of things I'll do. One, I'm gonna name this uh, at the bottom of the make code editor. I can give this a name. So I'm gonna call this dice roller and I'll save it. And that'll save a copy of that to um, my downloads folder. So I like to save it. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually, just for fun, I'll plug in my Circuit Playground Express here. Uh, and when I plug that in, uh, it will light up, all the pixels are lit up green on it at the moment, uh, meaning that it's ready to accept a program. Uh, and, and the way I'll put that program on there is by pressing this download button in the interface. And after a moment, if we're lucky, it will uh, show us that it is downloaded. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my case back on here because that'll make it easier for you to see the pixels. Uh, and I'm going to hold it back here. Get that reflection out of the way. And then which one's the A button? That's this one over here. So you should see it'll flash and blink. And then we're lighting up our pixels in red. Uh, and those are five of them. Yeah, you really can't see this well because of how, how bright and reflective it is. Um, it'd be easier if I had another diffuser. I don't think I have a convenient piece of paper. Let me, let me just check real quick. I've got a little bit of card stock. Oh, someone's falling. All right. All right. Things that happen in my studio that don't happen in my workshop, like getting phone calls. All right, let's see how that looks. Oh, totally blown out. That doesn't help one single bit. All right. Uh, so take my word for it, though. Uh, but otherwise, we can use the simulator here uh, to, to test that uh, theory. And, uh, it, it, but it looks really great on the actual device. So I'll use it on there. Uh, if you do have hardware, you can go ahead and try that yourself. If not, you can do it right in the simulator. Oh, look, you can see it in my glasses. That's funny. Here's, here's, the, here's the dice roller. The best way you're going to see it is a reflection in my glasses. All right, that was a four. Oh, it's a double reflection. That was a two. <laughs> all right, that doesn't work too well. All right, uh, so that's all the time that we have. Uh, thank you so much for joining me uh, here on the Microsoft Make Code Mixer channel. Uh, I will be doing a Make Code Live every Tuesday at this time, uh, with some exceptions. We might have some scheduling conflicts, but the plan is for Tuesdays at 12 o'clock Pacific, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Come on by. Uh, if you are a student or a teacher or a virtual classroom or a person who is just interested in uh, learning more about creating projects with Make code and uh, like I said, I'll be doing these inside of a few different of the Make Code editors, from Circuit Playground Express to Maker.MakeCode, which allows a bunch of different hardware boards, to the Make Code Arcade, which we can use in the simulator or also on hardware, such as the Pi Gamer, the Pi Badge, uh, and the Microbit as well. So uh, that is all. Uh, for Microsoft Make Code and Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park. This has been Make Code Live with John Park, and I will see you next time. And go check the schedule to see 
what other make code mixer channel shows are going to be playing throughout the week because we have a ton of great content for you. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.